peace and love family it's your girl six the goddess and keep in mind i'm a goddess and i'm sensitive about my shit i hope you all are doing well i was doing better before this came across my desk and honey we want to talk about it today because there's a serious conversation that needs to be had and uh we're going to go ahead and have it so there are some podcasters now, some people, you know, it just seems like anybody nowadays can pick up a camera and have a podcast. People who are not even funny, people who are not attractive, people with no talent. Um, I think people are just bored because some of these people that y'all show up in droves to go see, I don't see the allure. I don't see the appeal. It'd be the most basic lanes sitting up there in two chairs with a microphone and y'all just there. I don't understand that. Like, what value are you getting from this? It's mediocre to say the least. Um, I'm going to play the clip. The glasses are going on. We're going to get right into it. Uh, these two clowns named Jay's and James and Fuhad. OK, they are from the UK. I believe that one of them is biracial and the other one is Yoruba Nigerian. Just for context as to what is going on here. They went on the flagrant podcast with Andrew Schultz. And, you know, Andrew Schultz is a typical mediocre, you know, white man um, who is extremely insecure. Uh, and you're about to see what I mean uh, when I show y'all this. So in a clip, um, he threw his weight around a little bit. I'm going to show y'all the clip and then I'm going to give my commentary and we want to really break this down. Uh, I'm going to make myself smaller here so y'all can see this and check this out. Let go for the back. She, yeah, she just. Wait, she what, is the, what is the black girlfriend effect? This, oh, you, you never know you about just throw up the other culture. Yeah, so you'll see a, a, a guy who's had a black girlfriend. All of a sudden, he's got buzz cut, like yeah, clean shape up. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. 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 Like that. Like like that. Like that. <laughs> they yeah. shave their hair because they start losing it because they're so stressed <laughs> being around this black girl complaining about shit all the fucking time. That's why they got to shave their hair, bro. White guys with black girlfriends, they grow a beard because there's more cushion when they get slapped the fuck out of. <laughs> I think I think the black girlfriend effect. Hmm, it might be a protective instinct, bro. You think? Yeah. Do you guys? Do you guys have you ever had black girlfriends? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you, have you ever had white girls? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. What's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> we love them all. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh Just, really? We love them all. Yeah. That means white. Yo, who gets no. here? <laughs> <laughs> Never anywhere on this internet will you see a podcast full of black men sit with a white man on a couch and the first thing he sit down is let me go ahead and prove my inferiority. You'll never hear them say, oh, yeah, the white girl effect. Yeah, it's probably that you stop showering. <laughs> yeah, it's probably that they go caring on you. <laughs> it's probably that they'll sleep with your best friend because we know them white girls. They'll sleep with you, your daddy, your best friend. They don't care. OK, matter of fact, there's a clip going viral right now. Some girl married to some athlete telling a story about how, oh, yeah, when we first started dating. Oh, I slept with his teammate to piss him off. Like That's totally normal with white women. You'll never see black men be able to sit in front of a white man and laugh and joke about all of the negative stereotypes about his own women and their evilness and their wholeness. You just won't see that. Yet it is so common to see it the other way around. Now, me personally, I'm an old school kind of girl. I love a man's man. I can't do the whole giggly like a little boy. <laughs> that honestly makes me nauseous. I like a man who was a grown ass man. Say what he got to say. He don't laugh at nothing. He don't find funny. He don't laugh to make another man comfortable. That is a personal ick for me. And I tell a lot about a man about how when he's too giggly and laughing at another man, when he's really disrespecting you in your face to see what you want to say. So the part about this that was so disturbing to me and, you know, now when I look at two males like James and Fuhad, I just see a vagina, like literally no respect for you as a man. What I find so interesting is this whole thing of, you know, who like better, black girls or white girls. What's so interesting is I researched far and wide to go look at y'all little funky tour y'all did here in the States, which I hope y'all took y'all ass back home. I hope y'all gone. Matter of fact, don't come over here no more. Matter of fact, just stay where y'all are. Y'all so lame. I, nothing is worse 
than a man who isn't a man. Like it disgusts me. You know, Harriet would have shot you, jump off a bridge. We do not care. Okay. Um, but what I found so interesting about y'all funky little score was that I'm scouring the audience and your audience is predominantly black women. What I find the most interesting about black men who idolize, pedestalize and only date white. What I find so interesting is it's never the white women that support them. I remember when everything was happening with Kanye, they were like, oh, why are the sisters laughing? I need to support him. Absolutely not. Once you give yourself, you are your most valuable resource. Once you give that outside the race, that's their people responsibility to support you. That's not our responsibility no more. And after I, I've gotten so tired of these dudes on these podcasts going forward, Child, I'm not listening. I don't want to hear nothing no man got to say unless you are married to a fully black woman. I'm going to be so real with you. I don't want to hear it no more. This is so exhausting. This ain't got nothing to do with jokes. Black people don't get in front of white people and immediately feel inferior and try to make them put themselves underneath us because we're that weak. We don't do that. You do not see black people get in front of white folks. And the first thing out of our mouth is, let me go ahead and prove my superiority. We don't do that. All right. I'm to the point now, child, I don't want to hear no man with no microphone. If I don't look and see you're married to a sister, I don't want to hear it. I'm tired of uh, sitting here giving them the views, funding single men to continue to be single and pay for the dollars to sleep with different women around town and take them out for hookah, Casa Migos, lemon pepper wings. I don't want to support anybody where that money is not going back to a black family. I am about sick and tired. You want to know somebody, man, half of what you need to know about him, you'll know by who he married to. If you ain't married to a sister, I don't want to hear nothing you got to say going forward. Because the white women they love so much are not the ones showing up to support their business ventures, support their ideas. They're not. Those are the women they get to just show up, you know, be pedestalized, get made a fuss of and go. They don't have to support them, stand up for them, sacrifice for them, nothing. They have no expectations for them. So sisters, y'all have to understand in any group of women, the women are always the one people market to. You have to have the women on board to make money. So, you know, we got to get to the point, baby, just, you know, support brothers who married to a sister. I'm sorry. Stop supporting single men that just use their money to sleep around. Stop supporting men married to non-black women. Just stop it. You know, we are the resource where we go. The money is. And so we got to start doing better with requiring the money we spend to come back into our community in some type of way. Now, these clips were brought to the light due to something else that they said. This is what really triggered the controversy and caused people to dig deeper into other things they've said. So they were on the Poor Minds podcast with two sisters, and this is what they have to say. I'm going to give my thoughts in a minute. I'm going to play this to let y'all hear what they said. So far. Oh, thank God we ain't from here. I'm a Texas. Sorry. Um, before, uh, I don't know why it didn't start from the beginning, but he says, we haven't seen any baddies in Atlanta so far. That's what he said in the beginning. You ain't offending me. <laughs> <laughs> you see that ain't fake. You see. We'll still go a couple of days. Maybe we'll find out. But yeah, yeah. I, I seen like two or three. Okay, but what is y'all's type though? Five is the type. Like, <laughs> so what makes a girl bad? It varies. It matters how you own it. It can be a like a skinny girl who wears the fuck out of being a skinny girl. Mm. She, and then you got a thick thing who just owns the shit out of being a thick thing. It's bad is bad is bad. That's a PR answer. A PR answer. Yeah. They're all beautiful. If you have Man, I'm not I... saying everyone's beautiful. I just told you Atlanta's okay. clap. <laughs> I never said everyone's beautiful. I just said I'm not seeing anybody's here. You know what's funny That's about it. Atlanta though? Atlanta has a lot of transplants. So a lot of the people that live here, yeah. like you rarely run into people when you're out and stuff that are from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Like the real Atlanta people, they be in the trenches. Like off oh. Cascade. We about to get jumped next time we go out. <laughs> Cleveland Ave. That's what they be. <laughs> what? We live here, man. I don't go to Cleveland Ave. I'm not kidding. In Atlanta, I've seen the least bodies so far. Oh, yeah. thank God. we. Okay. So I'm going to make a statement here. I don't care what nobody got to say about it. I'm going to be the one to go ahead and say it now. I know there are some brothers who might not date black women predominantly might not be in relationships with black women predominantly, um, but they're still attracted to black women. 
Okay. Half of the men that look the hardest are the black man holding a white woman hand. Sisters, y'all know what I mean. You've never seen somebody buck their eyes and get nervous and start sweating more than a brother holding a white girl hand and you looking good walking past. And he over here fighting within himself like, whoo, my God, you walk by looking good. Yeah, nigga, I know you wish. You over there with that dirty foot, dirty leg with no season food, baby. You made your decision. Guess you got to live with it. Yeah. But they sweating still. They are it to you still. Negroes like these black men who are not attracted to black women. I'm going to be the one to go ahead and say it. They be gay. End of story. I saw someone say, sometimes I can't tell if a man's gay or if he just like white girls. The accuracy. If you are a black man and it's like black women give you the ick, like, uh, black girls, uh, gross, disgusting, you're gay. Period. You liking the white women is your way of, okay, as long as the woman looks the least like me and who I came from, maybe. And a lot of white women, we know they eat shit. We know that you fuck a man or woman. They don't care. Okay. So them men, them black men that are giving the ick, uh, black women, that man said, Atlanta is clapped. This man said Atlanta has the least amount of baddies he's ever seen. Do y'all y'all do understand what that means, right? It's deeper than just some people say, just say you like white women. No, 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 honey. No, no, no. It's deeper than that. Just say you like a man. Because you're so obsessed with whiteness and the proximity to it, you become attracted sexually to the white man. That's what you really want. So when you say, I didn't see any baddies in Atlanta, translation, you didn't see any white men because white men are the minorities here. Atlanta has the most beautiful black women in the country per capita. I did my research at Real Nigga University. Okay. Atlanta has the most beautiful black women in one place in the country. In Atlanta, honey, you could go to the library, the grocery store, Walgreens, CVS, Advanced Auto Parts, and there's going to be a baddie in there. You just don't like black women and just say that. All right. And for these two sisters here. Now, I do understand that, you know, as women, we have a natural desire to be wanted, a natural desire to be adored. I totally get that. But y'all sisters who will sit there and see a man bold face lie on your own kind and your only response is, oh, I'm glad that he ain't say Houston. Girl, I'm going to pray for you, honey. Okay. Y'all sisters on this podcast are just as wrong as they are because, first of all, why are you even platforming black men that don't even like us? That's the first thing. Why y'all sitting in the face with this Nigerian and this fucking half breed sitting there kicking with them for what? And while you're sitting here hearing them say, uh, Atlanta is clapped. This has the least baddies I've ever seen. How did y'all disassociate from that and feel like, well, he ain't talking about us. That's just his preference. He ain't say Houston, ma'am. Y'all look like Bert and Ernie. He talk about y'all too. And as women, y'all let him come on your platform and play in your face. Shame on y'all. Y'all ain't shit for that. And I see poor minds doing something at City Winery or something. Don't go see that them hoes either. Okay, at some point, a line got to be drawn. This stuff is affecting the community in real life. We ain't got time to be attacked this way. I don't give a, I don't ain't nothing about no joke, no nothing. Because you try to make certain jokes, jokes about them people and you see how far that gets you. So shame on y'all as black women for letting them sit there and gaslight y'all in y'all face. And y'all only response is, well, he ain't talking about me. I am pretty sure they are not in the rush to go buy y'all a ring and go marry y'all either. Now, this last clip I'm about to show you, this was really nauseating, honey. This I want y'all to also keep in mind, these Negroes are shook. They have deleted most of their podcasts. They are so self-hating, so coon-like, so colonized. They have bent the knees so hard to the queen that they had to literally just 
delete everything because they had said so many disparaging things about sisters. Y'all can delete this all you want to. Y'all already some bitch ass niggas. When I look at you, I don't even see a man. I see less than a man. You know, for men like Andrew Schultz, it must suck, right? It must suck to be sitting over there with a beard and a, I'm sorry, a mustache over there smelling like bratwurst water. Like imagine being so weak of, oh my God, black people come around. The first thing I need to do is make a joke about their race. This man was literally the first thing was drilling them about their race. And I am not exaggerating. This man was sitting up there like, oh, y'all Nigerian. Oh, what are you, Nigerian Irish? Oh, you're like a double slave then. Ha ha ha, y'all. Ha ha ha, y'all. You're like a double slave. <laughs> he Irish and Nigerian. Ha <laughs> What's your name? Fuhad? How do you pronounce it? Fahad? Fuhad? What is that, like African? What are you, Yoruba? This man was like, so who's the smartest of y'all? Who's the smartest Africans? Who's the dumbest? Who's the, what he said? He said, who's the most conniving? Like, oh my God, I literally can't imagine being so genetically recessive. I can't imagine being so weak and sitting over there with a state trooper, hot dog water smelling beard that like the first thing I have to do is, oh my God, tell me you a dumb nigga. Quit. So I can feel better about myself, y'all. <laughs> it's a joke though, y'all. <laughs> y'all quit. So Andrew Schultz, fuck you. I hate white men like you. So arrogant, but really don't know shit. So mediocre. Your mediocrity just carried you through life. You have no real knowledge. You have no real comeback for anything. Everything is just, <laughs> all you can do is this condescending, laughing everything off. You have no real knowledge of nothing. You have no real talent. Everything you do is, ha ha, y'all, it's just a joke. Ha ha, ha ha, everything, it was a joke, y'all. How weak. It must suck to be, look, look at you over there. The first thing you got to do is try to throw your weight around and feel like more of a man. Oh, you shaking the table. Fuck you. I can't stand a mediocre. Well, I almost called you something right now. Over there, I, if I saw you, I wouldn't know if you was ready to give me a ticket or chop me up into 10 pieces. I don't know if you a state trooper or a serial killer or both. How you looking over there? And I don't know who that coon is sitting on your couch too, but fuck him too. Okay, all y'all can go to hell. I don't care, give a damn if this is even monetized at this point because y'all honestly disgust me. Okay, now this last clip right here is the one that really just, my God today. I said, wow, honey. Imagine, imagine being a quote unquote man and this is what you saying. Now get ready y'all, cringe level 10,000. Don't say I did not warn you. She wants mixed race kids, like she's, her heart is set on it. So she yeah, wants yeah, a yeah. black man. That's all she goes for, yeah, yeah, black yeah. man. So quick context. He's having some type of conversation about a white woman he dealt with saying that she want mixed kids and one black man. Now, that on its own is so cringe. You know, I've always stated that it is very unhealthy and very abnormal for a man to be attracted to someone more powerful than him. And we all know that white women are more powerful than black men. That girl even blink wrong and she will have the whole system at your neck like this. I've always thought it was weird, black men that go behind enemy lines to lie down and procreate women like that who inevitably are going to sun you, hold all the power, and at any moment her tears can take every, you and everyone around you down. It is very odd for a man to be sexually attracted to a woman with that much power over him, which goes back into them and their attraction to white women as having stints of homosexuality on it because you clearly enjoy being dominated. You enjoy being a subordinate because you have to coddle her feelings and cater to her so that her tears don't make this whole London Bridge come falling down. OK, so he is talking about not only the white he's admitting he know he a bad buck. He knows these white women are fetishizing him. They know that they're just looking for a mixed baby to piss off their dad. He knows this. So he's going to speak about a white woman that was trying to get with him. But listen to what he says next. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and there's this girl that um, she used to watch on a TV show who was obviously black. She was like, oh, I wish I was her. I'm thinking what jesus christ she kept on saying oh. 
So the white y'all watching TV, the white girls see a pretty black girl come across the screen and she says, oh, I wish I looked like her. And his response, do y'all see the face of disgust he made? This is what I mean by these are niggas who are gay. This is what I'm talking about. It's more than a preference. It's more than I prefer white women. No, they are disgusted by black women. As a black man, you are gay. End of story. And I am so tired of y'all and your desire for men just running rampant by torturing women because you can't just keep it real about what you like. Everything a man does is about his dick and his sexuality. Everything. Everything a man does is about his dick and his sexuality. Every single thing. It's always about his next piece, his sexual preference, everything a man does. So some people say, why is it important to know their sexual orientation? Oh, it's very important. Oh, it's extremely important. Oh, yes, we need to know where you stand. So I want y'all to see this face that he makes like she want to be a black girl. And I was like, what? What are you saying? Then the half breed goes, Jesus Christ. Let's keep watching though. It, it gets, it continues getting worse. I wish I was black. I wish I was black. I'm Jesus thinking. Christ. What? For starters, if you was black, you wouldn't be getting any black then. So I'm just saying. <laughs> I want y'all to know what he just said there. This is very important. Ain't nothing about this funny or nothing like that. I want y'all to note, he just said, and I quote, first of all, if you were a black woman, you wouldn't be getting any black men. So this is still jokes and preference, right? So this is still not that big a deal, right? We're still just sensitive, right? This is homosexual hatred. Like you hate yourself because you're homosexual. So your solution is to try to deflect by hurting other people. Just say you like bussy, sir. Make it easier for all of us. <laughs> It's just like, that's such, that's such an, that's such a bold statement to say. I wish I was I black. I wish I was black. Like, yes. What's you, going on in your life? What, what? Do you know what I mean? You're white, fam. You're white. You're just, winning. You've won the game. You're, you're out here. You're just out here white, <laughs> just with all the rights to you. And you want to be black. I'm not saying there's obviously nothing wrong with being black. I love being black. But Stop. like. The fact that you, what are you seeing that you're not experiencing? Like, what are you seeing? Exactly. What's so greener over here? Like, what is this, greener that you're thinking, I'm missing out? It, oh, it blew my mind. It blew oh, my mind. Yeah, Obviously, no. there was no negative effects on me per se, because I still fucked her. Yeah. I had been <laughs> fucking her before she said that comment, and I was fucking her after that comment. All right. <laughs> You know what? <laughs> um, yeah, if y'all was planning on making another trip over here, just don't. All right, because the level of colonization. Now, I don't even see some American brothers that I ain't never even seen them touch a black girl. But I still have never heard them say something like, oh, why would you want to be black? If you're white, you won. Boy. The stuff y'all on, this is next level. Y'all are mentally sick. And I understand how y'all got that way, especially the mixed breed. We already know how it is with mixed people. They tend to always lean towards fantasizing about their white side because they put the black side gets less and gets treated worse. So I expected it from the mutt. But the Yoruba man, come on now. You black as they come over there looking like Baloo the Bear. I want to put you in the jungle book so bad. And you got the nerve to sit there like, oh, yeah, she wanted to be a black girl. Like, why would she do that? Just stop. Just stop. OK, this is y'all do understand it's exactly what they want you to do. In your effort to stick it to the black woman, in your effort to come down on her and your effort to ex to express your ick and your disdain for her, which y'all fail to realize is you make yourself look crazy. See, outside of your colonized mind, 
The rest of society, men respect each other based upon their relationship with their women. You can't speak on a white woman. You can't speak on a Jewish woman. You can't speak on an Indian woman. Their men are going to step up, not because of the women, but for them as a man. See, too many times, men in the black community, you get tricked out of your manhood by people telling you that you doing your job as a man is, uh, you ain't got to do that for them black bitches. Who cares? If you want to do that, that's fine. Because you're right. You don't have to do it for black women. But inevitably, in your desire to put us down and your desire to let the world know that you're not attracted to a sister, you signal to other men that you a hoe. And while you sitting there with the white man, ha, 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 oh, you, who you like better, black girls or white girls? Ha, ha, ha. You do understand that was his way of gauging how much of a man you were. They already stereotypically assumed that you was a black man at your week, especially a European black man. They already assumed that. And so they test you to see. That's why the first thing out of his mouth was to attack your women. If you a black man, it's not about us. It's not about, oh, we ain't going to sit here and protect y'all and do y'all know it. And I do with that. It's about protecting yourself, actually. It's about not looking like less of a man to everyone around you. And the way that you, James and Fuha, Lord Farquaad, whoever y'all is, y'all have signaled to the world that you are little boys. Nobody will ever respect you. We will never re-respect you. Ain't nobody giving you a second chance. It's just never happening. Y'all are a bitch. You're less than a human, less than a man, honey. If I had, if you was on fire, I had a drink of water, baby, I'll drink it. Okay. Fellas like this cannot get any support. No one should listen to them talk. Um, they need to stand their truth and admit that they are lovers with each other. Okay. Do us all the favor and just come out in y'all relationship. Um. And even worse than that, though, y'all, like as, as though it could get no worse, right? Then comes the apology. Okay, let me show y'all the apology. I, I just thought about that. Hold on, because the apology was so sad to me. And the apology which is what made me say, you know what? We just need to, in general, stop supporting black men with microphones who don't have you know what I'm saying he need to be with a sister. Men in every other society do that. Okay. Men in every other society, they don't let other men in where they have something to lose unless he's married. You know what I'm saying? So we need to start doing that same thing, not giving our support and giving everything like this to, to uh, a man who haven't made a decision yet. Look, look, this is the apology, y'all. Once again, get ready for cringe level 1000. This was their apology, guys. And this is why they some hoe ass, bitch ass niggas. Honestly, though, just look at how they're sitting. They're sitting like my son and his friends when they're too loud playing video games. And I got to come downstairs and say, keep it down. Have y'all lost your mind being so loud? This how my 16 year old son and his friends sit and look when I have to go down there and yell because they don't lost their mind being loud, eating up on my food and wearing their shoes in the house. They look just like this. And here y'all are as some grown males sitting over there looking like your dick is in your ass like a child or a dog who's shit in the house and the owner came home and know they're in trouble. I'm disgusted when I look at y'all. I can't stand to see a grown adult male look like a bitch like this. It repulses me. I can't stand a black man who does not stand up and be a fucking man regardless of who is around. My God, your manhood is all you got. You already over there, broken, poor, forced to suck white ass to have two pennies to fucking rub together. My God, today, your manhood and your name is all you got. Your integrity is really all you got. And you can't even do that. And this is the fuck ass apology. Get into today's episode. Mm -hmm. uh, quick PSA, quick acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. um, so... If you know, you know. If you don't, that's fine. Um, so you don't disparage your entire race in front of the white man. And the first thing out your mouth is, oh, a uh, quick acknowledgement. Like, oh, a uh, quick note. Like, OK, here, Dan, you black bitches get mad about everything. All right. Real quick. We sorry or whatever. You know, 
like maybe once you said uh, yeah a real quick apology a real quick thing maybe you could have you you should just saved it honey honey you you could have saved all this 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 is the real truth this shows their true colors sometimes your true colors are not necessarily shown on an incident that happens or a mistake you made, a lot of times your true colors are shown by how you react to an incident. And this is the best they had for us. But we just wanted to address something that's happening at the minute yep. this past weekend. Uh, there's been a couple of clips going around uh, from when we did a session on the Flagrant podcast um, while we were on our US tour. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there were a few jokes made um, that were incredibly inappropriate. One specifically, bro. Incredibly. One specifically pertaining to black women. Yep. Um, and in the clip, um, Andrew was making a joke. Uh, I'm not even going to get into specifics. Making a uh, like, frankly, like racist joke. Yeah. And we were laughing at it. Mm -hmm. And to give, there's, there's. First of all, before we get into like specifics or anything like that, obviously, there's just literally no excuse. There is no excuse. Agreed. Um, and fight or flight is a real thing. Like it is, yeah. Fight or flight is a real thing. And it's so not easy to say, but it, when you're in those situations, you you look at it through a lens of like, bro, if it was me, I promise you I'll stand up, I'll kick them cameras down. Yeah. I'll smack homeboy in the face. Yeah. I'll say this, I'll do that. But when you're in there, you're in shock. You're in shock. And all you want to do is move on. Yeah. All, all, bro, move on is the fucking... Do... Nigga, that's how bitches respond. You a grown man. Like, take this down. Because honestly, we already discussed it that you're less than a man. And this just made me throw up. I had to pause and throw up. Do you? How can any? Now I see why y'all do it, white girls. I, and this really makes sense. Because I already know a sister couldn't even get wet for this type of shit. This right here. What a grown man talk about some. Eh, it was fight or flight. Y'all might think that you would defend yourself. But in the moment, I was so scared and so taken aback. Say you a bitch without just say you a bitch then you a bitch ass nigga. We have no respect for you. We don't give a fuck. Be grown ass man talking about some uh y'all might think that you would have stood up for yourself, but honey, women do the whole comply to survive move. Women, we do that, we freeze. We just uh okay, let me just try to you know be nice to this person and comply so they don't hurt me. That's what a bitch do. You actually turned your microphone on and admitted to everyone that you are not a man. Take delete this, honey. Delete this. Just just take this down, honey. Word, bro. All right. you want to do is fucking move on. Just move on to the next thing. Yeah. Just move on to the next thing. There's and so like many we had to say a few times, bro. Just move on. Just move on. Just move on. So many different topics. You were like, move on, move on, move on. Yeah. I mean, it's not even like about pity laughs or anything, but we just wanted to. Get out get, of that situation. Get of, literally get out of that situation. Keep the ball rolling. And we thought it was going to be more of like a a bros chat. Yeah, but it, just it, so, it ended yeah, up yeah. being something that ended up being be. something that's like really, really hurt people that yeah. look to us for support and look mm. to us to feel protected. And protected is the main thing yeah. that I wanted to discuss is that it is our duty to protect you guys. Facts. Um, and it is definitely how he breathed the look. He had to do a deep breath, like. Oh, oh my god he it was he was struggling to even be able to say that out loud okay he just no he full of shit he was like yeah uh because it's our job to uh, protect y'all uh he was like it was killing him he talking about uh it's our job to uh, uh protect y'all Sisters, I feel like if we see any black women watching this, we should just be able to slap the fuck out of them. I feel like we should just be able to slap fire from them. If you see any sisters showing up today, little ugly ass podcast or listening to them, first of all, it's very dangerous as a woman to listen to a man who's not a real man. Nothing good is coming from that. Okay. Let's just start there. Let alone when they move in like this. Definitely not cool to be in that situation. And again, not be the ones to stand up and kick the cameras down. And we fucked it on that occasion. We did. It's not going to happen again. And it's about being human. It's about mm. realizing that you don't know what you- oh, We know it ain't going to happen again because ain't nobody coming to see you again. Oh, baby, we know it ain't going to happen again because you're toast. I suggest you go ahead and appeal to that white audience and try to get them on, baby. I, I suggest that y'all really go hard and get in that white crowd. Y'all committed at this point. Oh, honey, we know it won't happen again. 
because no one's going to ever, honey, I got y'all blocked on everything. I don't want to see shit from y'all. I don't want to give y'all a single view. I don't want to give y'all shit. Matter of fact, when I was looking at all this stuff, I made sure it was from people who had screen record your shit because I refuse to give y'all even a view for my content today. It ain't happening, baby. I promise you that. You ain't got to worry. You prepared for, you don't know how to prepare for something, something you don't know that you about. don't know yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. And once it's happened one time, you're like, fuck. All right. You learn from your mistakes. Um, and that's literally, that's you literally, literally learn from your mistakes. Yeah, we man. fucked it and we're like, we're sorry. You, apologize. And you, definitely, you definitely do apologize. It's for me, like, it's one of them ones where you you don't realize that like for one when you're part of a community you don't realize that you can hurt your own community mm, especially when, so when, bad. when you're not yeah when yeah. when unintentionally unintentionally for real and yeah. also on on top of that it was so cool. You ain't part of our motherfucking community ain't you way over there over the water we don't give a fuck we just never want to hear from you again Oh, you ain't hurt our community. We don't do that type of shit over here, baby. You stop saying this whole community thing. What community? First of all, you're a fucking half breed. You ain't in the community anyway. Let's start there. Second of all, you ain't hurt us. You ain't about, oh, you. we hurt our community. You don't even have the power to hurt us. You don't even have no power where you are. How would you have power to hurt us? We don't care. We just don't want to see you no more. Okay? You ain't hurt nothing over here. Talking about no babies in Atlanta. Atlanta is moving right along. Bad bitches is still walking all around Atlanta. You ain't stopped nothing. You ain't hurt nothing. What we want is for you to go away and never come back. You ain't hurt nobody though. Keep that in mind though, sweetie. Crazy that like the narrative that's been spun about how we feel about our community. Mm. The irony of the fact. Okay, enough of this. The lying is lying for me. It's not no narrative that's been spun. I hate this whole, oh, they need to apologize. Hey, to apologize for what? There's nothing to apologize. It's not like, oh, I said something that hurt you or I didn't take action that hurt you. You hate black women. You're literally repulsed by black women. So don't come to black women for support. And the story. It's that simple. You ain't gonna like us, but you making yourself look crazy. I'm like, y'all, y'all making yourself look, you know, like less than a man. You're making yourself look weak. You know what I'm saying? Life still go on. We just want y'all to never talk again. So now we see Andrew Schultz mock their apology and now see this is why i'm about to show y'all why right now why the correct thing to have done would to have been a man a man always got his protective instincts on a man always knows how to be in a tough situation and think very quickly on how to defend himself and his honor those are skills real men have we understand that y'all don't have that okay and now had you looked that other grown man in the face and said, listen, bro, I don't know what you got going on. It's kind of weird. I just sat down. The first thing you asking me is questions about who's the most dumb in my race. Who is this? Didn't y'all just start bathing? Don't y'all still not even use a rag? You know what I'm saying? So no, nah, we ain't going to do that. I would have been or I would have made white jokes back or something. There are so many ways y'all could have defended yourself and your honor in that situation. But you didn't. You tried to cop out, do the whole, oh, we hurt someone. Andrew shouldn't have been asking us that. He put us on the spot. No, he did exactly what men do when they get around each other was to test you to see how much of a man you are. And the fact that you sat there and froze up like a bitch because you hate yourself so much and you didn't want to say nothing to disparage white women because you still want access to them sexually and white men quiet as is kept. That's why he has no respect for you. So then Andrew then goes on to mock their apology. And um, this goes back to what I was saying about mediocre white men like Andrew who only made it where they are because they're mediocre and white. You're going to see what I'm talking about in this clip that this man has no real talent. His entire MO is, huh, it's a joke, huh, why is that serious, huh? Like, oh my, people like that, please just, I, I cannot handle it. So this is him mocking their apology. Before we get into today's episode, mm -hmm. uh, quick PSA, quick acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. um, so if you know, you know, if you don't, that's fine. Um, but we just wanted to address something that's happening at the minute. Yep. This past weekend, uh, there's been a couple of clips going around uh, from when we did a session on the Flagrant podcast. Um, while we were on our U.S. tour. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there were a, a few jokes made um, that were incredibly inappropriate. One, incredibly. Speci <laughs> Bro, incredibly. one specifically pertaining to black women. Yep. Um, and in the Hold on, wait. I think this is where, uh -oh, this is where it started. I'm going to show you all the part two where 
he actually starts to give his um, his thoughts. And of course, we don't get any real insight. We don't get a real apology. We don't get any acknowledgement for any of this. We don't see Andrew joking on no other community like this. Instead, all we get is a ha ha ha, like a Beavis and Butthead ha ha ha, and some more laughing and not oh my god to be white and mediocre like. Y'all literally don't have to have any brain, any talent at all. Like, it's absolutely incredible. So this is his Andrew response that we all knew would be his response. And please pay spe special attention to this Negroid at the end here. Boy, this right here, Negroes like him, honey, need to be studied. That you find that you want to sit on this couch with this mediocre caucasoid and actually think it's cool. Not knowing he got no, every minute you sit on that couch, he ain't got no respect for your ass either. Okay, black men and women need to understand there is nothing that you will do to the opposite sex of your group that is not an automatic reflection back on you. Everything you got to say about the, the men or women in your group, it applies to your ass as well. So and there Negroes like him just, oh, my God, I'm, I'm going to sit there and make this white man comfortable and disparage my own group. And that is why you are a loser. That is why you are at the bottom of the economic totem pole and always will be. Watch this. Oh, excuse yeah. me, though, I just want to take in the beginning of it. There's no excuse for jokes. <laughs> there is never an excuse for making jokes. But can we try? I'm not going to ever make an excuse for being a comedian. There is <laughs> never an excuse for making jokes. Yeah. Okay? Uh, that is a real statement said by a man. <laughs> <laughs> I just want that to be clear. There is never an excuse for making jokes with the boys. Go on, go on. Let's take it serious. Look at but look at look at how sad he is over on the left. Like, like it is yeah. Fight or flight is a real thing in the so so We should go back. We should go back, we should go back because he's going through it right now. Look look how he practiced this. Let me I'm gonna pick my skin I love off you finger. guys. <laughs> no, 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 no. I need you to watch him. Look, he bite his bottom lip like oh fuck man. There is no excuse. Um, oh, and fight or flight is a real thing. Like it is, yeah. Fight or flight is a real thing, and it's so not easy to say, but it, when you're in the situations, you you look at it through a lens of like, bro, if it was me, I promise you. I'll I'm not even gonna show a rest because after looking at these my mothers for forty some minutes, honey, my stomach hurt, and I made some delicious dinner that I want to be able to eat. If I watch any more of this, I'm not gonna be able to eat, honey. And I made some delicious food, and I want to be able to eat it, but. What is the moral of the story? The moral of the story is for black men and women, honey, you'll never catch me. I don't give a damn what the black men do, baby. I'm, you won't catch me dead on Nam podcast, especially not with no white bitch sitting there complaining about the white, the black man is this and he ain't that and he's this never in life. Why? Not only because you're just so self-righteous and just do so right. It's a reflection of yourself. James and Fahad, Fuhai, whoever you are, don't come back here no more. Please keep that shit over there. You know, keep y'all ass over there. Don't come over here no more. We don't want to hear nothing else you got to say. I hope we never got to hear or see from y'all again. Y'all are bitch ass niggas. You're less than a man. We have no respect for you as a man, as a human being. Matter of fact, you can jump off the dungeon bridge for all we care. We don't give a damn less. I hope nobody else watched your podcast. We know that white women are not about to come out in droves and support you how sisters did. Whatever happened to y'all, y'all deserve. Um, and that's the end of that. Okay. Cancel like me, you know, y'all about to learn today. OK, that shit that y'all about to learn today. Um, this is a mess. Y'all, please let me know y'all thoughts. Like the video, subscribe to the channel and I will see y'all on the next one.